really? Really? It's, it's true. I, I can't help it. It wasn't that sa- Oh, God. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> uh, happy Wednesday. It is a happy Wednesday, isn't it, Scott? <laughs> it, it is. Hi. Welcome to the Ask Mike Anything with... Mike Myers. And Scott Jernigan. We are here to ask, answer your questions. Ask your questions. Wait. Did you have a really good day at night last night, man? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, the goal of this live stream is to provide those of us who are isolated by the coronavirus an opportunity to continue our studies concentrating on CompTIA certifications. So the idea here is we start at 2 o'clock Central Daylight Time. Right, which and is then now. we go till three o'clock, and unfortunately, we can only go till three. In fact, if we leave, quit a little early before three, that might be helpful. I got a, a small conflict, but not a, a big one. Uh, but anyway, the goal here is to ask questions, and I'll answer them. Um, you ask questions by typing them here into the uh, live chat here on uh, uh, what is this? YouTube. <laughs> Type. <laughs> Now, a couple of things while we're here on YouTube. Uh, in the chat window, you might want to uh, see where it says top chat. Uh, you might want to hit the pull down there and switch that to live chat. That'll put things in better order and gets rid of their weird algorithm. Also, the other thing uh, next to the live chat to the right of that, the three ellipses. Or I guess it's one ellipse, which is made out of three. The three dots. The, the kebab. Three, the three dots. He doesn't know how to use the three dots. Uh, you might want to toggle the timestamp and uh, actually put the timestamp on. A lot of times while we're looking at questions, we'll say what time we see a question. That way, if by any chance we happen to miss a question or whatever it might be, you can always just type it back in. Uh, we do have giveaways today, as well as uh, usual discounts. We'll be giving away, um, let's just give away a voucher today. You wanna give away a voucher today? Yeah, but that's all we're gonna do today. But uh, so we'll give away a voucher and uh, and that will be our one contest for the day. So we're not gonna give away any practice questions. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. And uh, but of course we always have our amazing discounts. Uh, That's right. And senior instructor Dave Rush, who is working the back channel as our moderator, will post the AMA specials, which are just for you. It's fifty percent off of all of our combination ebook and total tester. This is the practice test bundle. So A plus ebook plus the A plus total tester, fifty percent off. That's A+, plus, Network+, plus, Security+, plus, Pentest+, plus, Cloud+, plus, CYSA+, plus, and Amazon uh, AWS. So these are good. Just go to www.totalsim.com and fill up your cart with uh, some good stuff. And when you check out, type in the code. And it's all yours. Type in the code. And you get... Uh, Wait, the... which is the code? I don't know. What's the code? Discount post for 203. First, first, with an F, not a one. F-I-R-S-T. Correct. Dave posted that at 203, so cool. there you have it. Yeah. Thank you, Dave. So you could, is the code is first at checkout, or is it uh, first. code is just first? First. Okay, there we go. Which is an outrageously good deal. And uh, I can't recommend it highly enough for those of you who are looking for to get a both an ebook and practice questions at 50% off. I mean, we're already about the cheapest out there, certainly. I mean, we're the. Che- I used to say we're the cheapest of the good training materials, but I'm we're just going to say we're like the cheapest, yeah. including a lot of bad training materials. That there is uh, that. Maybe we, we should raise our prices. Uh, <laughs> our prices are insane. We want you to pass. Absolutely. And we provide the training materials to help you get there. So, awesome. Sure. So I uh, I want you guys to know I've got a new prop. I'm very excited about this. Scott hates this prop so much. I'm just hiding my head in shame. I have a gun. Don't shoot me. (laughs) It's a fart gun. Yeah, I know. It has 20 different fart noises. (laughs) And it has like this trombone action too. (laughs) So it's even hilarious. It squirts, well, it has a thing that you can put fluids in. For smell-o-vision? Yeah, so it's got a little thing here you can put, yeah. <sighs> Men and boys, what's the difference? <laughs> the toys. <laughs> wow. And it just keeps getting funnier. Uh. <laughs> hey, Scott, come work for me. You'll have a lot of fun. Hey, what a great idea, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, 
Right? See, Andre, you've got my back. What? I know. I, I got you. He's feeling sorry for me. Why is he feeling sorry for you? Because, you know. Michael Reeves, I'm not Andre. I don't get it. I, I don't know. Oh, people are now they're sneaking in. Here, Dr. Quinn's here. There we go. That isn't meant to you, Dr. Quinn, per se. Just I want to make sure you saw my funny fart gun. Okay, so we do have some questions popping up already, <laughs> yes, Scott. So let's yes, get to do. work let's, here. Let's... You got to keep messing around, man. I, that's we have me. a short day today. Okay, okay. Uh, David Mueller was here first, early. And Harry Syria as well. I want, yep, Harry Syria? New Not name. the Harry Syria. The Harry. Of yes. the Connecticut series, no doubt. Mm, most likely. In fact, they're, they're kind of, uh, the series are famous because they're like all over the world. They call them the, the World Series. I guess wow. I, shouldn't, I shouldn't make that joke right now. It's too soon, man. <laughs> it's too, it's soon. too soon. Houston lost. Oh, Houston lost the pink. World Series. They, they, they not only lost. They got slapped around like a red-headed stepchild. Yes, that was a very sad moment for those of us living in Houston who are also baseball fans. Uh, it was a great season that ended on a dud. Yeah, I didn't. I was surprised. I really thought it was going to go to seven games. Yeah. Once we came back to Houston. All right, we're going to quit talking about baseball. All the Europeans are like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we you talk about race, race driving. I had somebody once tell me the one great thing about baseball. It's the only sport that doesn't have two goals on the end. All other sports have two goals on the end. Does cricket really have goals? Nobody plays cricket. <laughs> <laughs> Some dudes in India play it, maybe, and some Australians, but they're just confused people. They just want to be baseball players. Yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. So, All right, come on. Get, yeah, let's get, get to work the picture. Here. Heavy D showed up at 202. Hi. Heavy Good to Jesus. see. Yeah. All right, so JM at 204. Here's our first for real question. Uh, can you explain the difference between a host intrusion detection system and a network intrusion detection system? Also, which one do you prefer? That's a tricky question. Uh, I, think, I think he means host-based and network-based. No, I, mean, I, know, I understand. So uh, uh, host-based intrusion IDS versus network IDS. So a couple of things here. The concept of IDS as a solution that you can buy like an IDS system mm -hmm. Is, is kind of disappearing, mainly because of, uh, you know, uh, software-defined networking makes all these types of tool sets uh, so much easier and so much more powerful. If you're going to do IDS today, you're probably going to be doing IPS. No matter what, it, it, it's very, I haven't seen a pure IDS solution in a long time. Okay. Uh, but be that as it may, let's just say there is that type of thing. What does host base versus network base do. So in a host base situation, you're, you're talking about basically a very glorified type firewalling thing. I, I mean, it, it's not a, so well, I guess it, it, it would work with a firewall would be the better way to say it. IDS is worried about uh, intrusions that are coming on to a particular system. Uh, and host based IDS is not, I'm not going to say it's, rare, but I would say it's more uncommon. Most of the time when we're talking about IPS, IDS solutions, we're talking about network-based because why protect an individual system when you can protect a, a complete network? Now, you got to be careful here because you then might say, well, Mike, why do, why do we have host-based firewalls and network-based firewalls? Mike, why do we have... <laughs> because it's a different animal. In, in, a, in, a, in a pure firewalling situation, mm -hmm. when you have a host-based firewall, basically what you're doing, well, when you have a network firewall, like in a Soho router, mm -hmm. that's protecting your little network from the evils of the internet. Right. A host-based firewall is mainly there to protect your network from your idiocy, uh, where you might click on an executable that's trying to get out to do something gotcha. or something like that. So, uh, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to basically... Throw a red flag up if you send a bad email or send a start to click on something that you shouldn't. Yeah, and, and, that, and, and that really just depends on what vendor you're using. So that's really when you're talking about IDS, IPS solutions on host versus network. That's kind of the way you got to look at it, right? Is 
what can an individual host detect in terms of an intrusion that, uh, that would be different than how a network detects intrusion? So with a network intrusion, you might want to look at incoming malformed HTTPS packets that are coming into your web server, say. And that, that would be something that, that might okay. be an example of that. Okay, excellent. Whew. Ask me what time it is, I'll show you how to make a clock. Right. <laughs> this is going to be the day of shame for Scott Jernigan, so. <clears throat> okay, I won't do it Overwatch at 204. What a great name, Overwatch. Hi guys, what is the best or what CompTIA certification do you recommend for a system administrator? CompTIA certification. I, I, I mean, I would go the whole A plus, A plus, Net plus, Security plus would probably be the way to go. But you know, once you get there, then you really need to start talking about what type of systems are you administering, right? right. So then you'd be looking towards a Microsoft certification uh, you might be looking towards, uh, you know, getting some of your Linux uh, certs, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, so system administration is, you know, administrating systems. Right. So dealing with user names and passwords and you know onboarding stuff and that kind of a thing. So uh, there's a lot of people out there in the IT world who probably don't need A plus because they don't crack open boxes. Um, but system administrators need to know uh, system hardware for sure. People are digging your ridiculous gun. By well, of way. course they are. Yeah, I know. So, lots of people are showing up, have shown up, which is great. Michael Reeves, hello. Tullowit, hello. Andre is here, all the way from the Netherlands. Belgium. See, he had my back, so I'm going to say where he's actually from. Uh, it's just, it, it's never <laughs> going to get unfunny for me, Andre. I mean. <laughs> Carla Rain's here, hello. Good to see you. A.V. Nutt, Never Grow Up. Never Surrender. Dr. Quinn, I want Galaxy one. Quest, what a great movie. Never saw it. You never saw Galaxy Quest? No. Mm, the Monte Cristos are particularly popular. <laughs> Dwight Schrute from The Office was in it. I never saw The Office either. You sure I should be working for you? I, no, <laughs> I'm not sure at all. You never saw The Office? No. <sighs> Okay, wow. okay, come on, let's keep moving. Wow, on. okay. E. White says, and this I think this is a complaint, your Security Plus videos don't end with music. We get a lot of people going back and forth on, so the, the little beginning and ends of videos we call bumpers in the industry. Right. And how long a bumper is, uh, you know, what, what the bumpers do. Uh, we get we get a lot of technical a, challenges on this. A ton of feedback on those. And it seems like Good no matter what we do, someone's going to say something. And yeah. you know, and and please, uh, E. White, I love these types of inputs. Uh, I like the music, you know, I, with the characterized Mike Myers mm -hmm. thing. I do too. Uh, but the the problem was we didn't expect people to start uh, binge watching them. I know your system is shutting down. This could be an interesting day. Oh dear. Okay, guys. So. My primary studio system just shut down again, but I think we're okay. Uh, and Dave Rush, if you would kindly, in the back channel, say, yes, you're still live. That because be Dave awesome. Rush, we think we might have just gone offline. So Dave Rush, please type something quickly. Uh, and in the meantime... Now oh, Dave Rush isn't typing. Oh, okay, we're okay, fine. Geez, All right. Man. So... Um, How the hell? Oops. I don't know. To 206, Alexandra Blandon says, taking my test soon. Wish me luck. I don't know which test you're taking, but good luck. So there we go. Break a leg, as we say. Uh, Alucard at 206. Can you explain what a PoE. power over Ethernet injector and a PoE capable switch is? Is that just a switch that supports PoE? Yeah, I mean, you know, keep in mind, the whole idea behind power over Ethernet started when we started having to put wireless access points all over our buildings. Right. And a wireless access point, like any electronic device, needs electricity in order to function. So what we didn't want to have happen, and we, like I invented all this. Right, of course. Uh, what, what the industry didn't want to do was end up having wireless access points strung up on hallways all over some physical plant 
that had not only a piece of Ethernet coming out of it, but also an AC adapter or whatever to give it right. juice. So Power Over Ethernet, it's about 15 years old now. I, I, I'd sure. have to look that up. I'm not quite sure how long it's been around. So Power Over Ethernet simply allows us to provide power over the same Ethernet cable that uh, is our network link. Uh, and I forget what the voltage is. There's a couple of different voltages. Right. There's different versions and, of PoE. I forget what they are. And you will know you're buying a PoE switch because you're going to pay, I don't know, five times as much as the comparable non-PoE switch. And it's going to very, very proudly claim power over Ethernet. And uh, maybe not five times as much, but they're definitely they're selling a premium. Yeah. And, uh, and it'll say PoE switch. And the beautiful part to this is now you can take all your wireless access points and... This is an interesting point. We always talk about a PoE-capable switch, mm -hmm. but do we have PoE-capable WAPs? Yeah. Because they would have to be, because the, the WAP itself would have to be able to accept electricity coming in from the Ethernet. Right. Absolutely. But I've never seen a... Sorry, my nose is attacking me again. <laughs> uh, I've never seen a switch that advertises itself, other than in small print, where they do, but I've never seen a, a, a wireless access point say WAP, P-O-E WAP. Absolutely, they do. Okay, well, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not saying they don't. I'm just... Yeah, in fact, I, I, I bought one recently ah. uh, to mount in my kitchen ceiling and uh, did the whole power over Ethernet thing, spent a lot of money on a P-O-E switch, and definitely got a WAP that was P-O-E ready. Cool, cool. Yeah. All right. Well, the problem is, is some people don't have PoE-capable switches. Right. And especially if you only have one or two wireless access points, instead of paying a substantial premium to get a PoE-capable switch, you can just uh, get what's known as a PoE injector. And feel free to just do a Google search. You know, there's lots of them out there. So a PoE injector works in lieu of a PoE-capable switch. Right. And what you can do is take a regular switch, plug it in the switch, PoE, they're usually about this big. You plug RJ45 in one end, you plug RJ45 in the other, and the injector also comes with AC. And that's where the electricity right. comes into play. So if you have a PoE-capable switch, you shouldn't need a PoE injector. Right. Hope that cleared that up. Are you card? Excellent. Uh... Yeah, PoE version 2 is at 48 volts. Right. Did I ever tell you the f a funny story? Tell, you, you have never <laughs> this, told me a funny the, story, this Mike. This is an old, this has happened a long time ago. And I was working with uh, telephone lines, old school telephone lines, okay? Mm -hmm. And I didn't, so in telephones, old telephones with their RJ11, I mean, obviously they have electricity coming into the phone, right? Mm -hmm. And I was always, I never knew what the voltages were. So I just, I took an RJ11 and I stripped the two wires and I plugged it into the phone jack and I'm, I'm going to put a voltmeter on it, right? Okay. And I didn't have enough wire took off of one of these. So I, <laughs> at that moment, the phone rang. And my friends, the ring voltage for old school analog plain old telephone service is 48 volts. And in your mouth, it feels like 4,000 volts. And I was just like, <clears throat> oh, man. That's, you cannot make this stuff up. I did. Ah, uh, that's great. Uh, get a couple of beers in me. I'll tell you guys a story about what happened with the electrical outlet. Uh. <laughs> so do you remember uh, the old AT power supplies? I do. That, that were the actual electricity went through this on and off switch, not the soft power that we've had with ATX for the last 20 years? Yeah. yeah. That really is 115 volts here in the States. Yeah, we uh, rewired one, in fact, in your house when we were working on the uh, first edition of the Network Plus book. Oh, good Lord. And we were upstairs doing a gaming session and setting up a new gaming gaming machine and we uh, <laughs> cross-wired the AT power supply and our friend Brian Schwartz flipped, flipped the switch, blew breakers, did all kinds of fun things. Yeah, it was, it was a, an explosive moment. Excellent. All right. So John Doby, uh, Ed, guys, do keep in mind, we're going to give away a Two to four hundred dollar voucher today, so and we have to do it. Yeah, we really do have to stop before three o'clock. So it's already two twenty. So we got some more questions. We do have Let's some get more. them. We do have some more. Um, uh, Overwatch at two ten said he found uh, he she I don't know. I found my Apple MacBook Pro firewall disabled by default. 
Is that suspicious? Uh, Max, th that's uh, that's all on by default with a Mac, right? I thought it was. That's why I'm, I'm a little curious. About it, that. It, it, suspicious? No. Curious might be a better word. Uh, I would want to turn it back on and make sure, well, two things. Number one, can you turn the firewall immediately back on when you want? If you can't, that's a clue. Uh, it just, boy, I've, malware issues in Macs, I just have run into that maybe... Never. <laughs> well, no, not never, but extremely rare. Yeah. Uh, I would still use my Windows experience to deal with this. And the first thing I would do is, can I turn the firewall on and can I confirm that it's effective by trying to, you know, run a particular program or whatever right. it might be? And then the other thing is, uh, if I cannot turn on the, I would also be nervous if I could not turn on system preferences. Yeah, but I'm really putting a Windows experience on an Apple product, so that could be rusty. Yeah, and from our back channel, our, our uh, Apple Apple centric folks um, are stating that brand new brand new Apple boxes are coming from the factory with the firewall disabled. So, oh, oh, okay. Interesting. That's even better answer. Yep. Thanks, guys. Uh, have I checked out Age of Empires 4? Uh, I've just started watching gameplay today. Uh, just to make sure I'd probably like the game. Uh, you can almost guarantee by this time next week I'll be a proud owner of a copy of it. Absolutely. It's, very, it's a pretty game. Yep. And I love that top-down real-time strategy. Which I don't. So I was playing Civilization 6. Today. You were playing Civilization 1. Well, maybe not today, but... <laughs> this is true. I've been playing <laughs> since the beginning. Civ, Civ 1 looked like Minecraft. And we already answered that question. JM at 213. Is the Security Plus cert stackable? Yes. Very stackable. I don't, I, I don't have all the stackable capabilities in my brain. Did the guys... Oh, look at this. There we go. Back channel saves us again. Right. Scott, can you so put that link over there so that the, the guys can, can read that? Uh, JM, uh, Scott's going to drop a link in the chat for you to look at stackable certs. This comes from CompTIA. Uh, and the, the different stacks, for example, specialist uh, is A plus, network plus, and security plus, professional, security plus, cloud plus, and there are other stackables. Uh, at that link, so check it out. Jeremy Parker, mm, okay, you're going to need to uh, watch The Office, LOL. So first of all, Jeremy, you just quoted Office Space <laughs> and not The Office, but we're gonna let it slide there, okay? <laughs> you're gonna have to come in on a Saturday. That's from Office Space. So you didn't watch that either? No, I didn't watch that either. You don't have 16 pieces of flair? No. I apologize for my, for, what were you doing? Reading Shakespeare or something? Verily. I like Shakespeare. Yeah. But soft. <laughs> a whole a thus. Still, Midsummer Nights is pretty funny if you give it a There's chance. There's some great Shakespeare. Huh? Great Shakespeare. So we e were still... It wasn't a comp it wasn't a complaint, I just noticed it. Well, okay. there we go. Okay. okay. Excellent. Uh, Alexandra Blandon is taking comp to A plus. Okay, yeah. As as Dave posted a few minutes ago, check out his uh, or, Pop back in on Friday for the Dave Rush Ask Me Anything, which is 2 o'clock Central Daylight Savings Time uh, here on the Total Seminars channel. Dave Rush has got a great show. The second half of his uh, uh, retro, Hammer? retro Pie, How to Build a Totally Epic Game Machine on a Raspberry Pi. Part 2 is this Friday, so check it out. And definitely let us know how you did. Good luck. Jen is Jen at 215. Got to, got to the command line chapters for 1002. I'm so bad at command line. Jen, the secret to command line is once you get a little comfortable with it, you're going to find yourself, it's going to be hard for you to use the GUI for a lot of things. Large, complex file manipulations, uh, of course, any form of scripting at all, uh, you'll find yourself going back to the command line over and over again. The problem you have is that both Windows and Mac can do an awful lot from the GUI. An awful lot. Uh, wait till you get to Linux. <laughs> <laughs> Where you pretty much have you to You can use do it. nothing, you know. Right. John yeah. Doby checked in from the UK. Hey, welcome to the show. Wait, you're missing a question. Um, am I? Am I? Is this a... We already answered that question. Okay, go ahead. Okay. 
Man, I could have swore we had fallen offline. Uh, <laughs> Dave Rush, be ready for a question for the voucher giveaway, please. That's coming up shortly. I'm, I'm just scrambling to get myself back up online here. Oh, I see what you're saying. Well, okay. the, 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 this, this A10 Mini Pro is its own output. Thank right. goodness. Right. Because... Uh, Avocado. I just call POE electrical magic. There you go. It's magic. It's magic. I like it. Mm -hmm. uh, Joey Quetzel at 218 asked, what interface do you use with an enterprise router? What interface? Do you mean... Depends what... Usually that's the brand of router that makes the biggest decision there. Right. Uh, most of the uh, Cisco stuff, I, I'll SSH into it just because I'm comfortable with iOS. Uh, but the... Uh, what's the router we have at the office these days? The... Uh, Ubiquity? Yeah, yeah, the Ubiquity. I tend to go to its graphical interface just because that's what I do first. But Ubiquity has a complete iOS-like interface. You can do everything from there. So it's a matter of... Uh... Okay. All right, so... Uh... Oh, so I'm gonna... Yeah, I'm... so you need to... You... I'm the I, one I, I, can... I will do this stuff and you do that stuff. Okay. How's that? We will divide and conquer so that we can actually do a giveaway, which would be very fun today. Um, so, Harry Syria at Syria, 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 I don't know how you pronounce your name, whether you add an extra syllable or not. Um, at 219, asked Dave if he's done a video on setting up a CA. So, I'm. A certificate get, authority? Yeah. Watch your security certificate video from a year ago but I have a local root CA that I've used to create a certificate for a CA slash DC. My Dude, issue is- Harry, I've never done that myself. I've just, I've never done that. So what I would suggest, Harry, is it, it pop on Discord after the show. Um, ch chances are very good that Dave, will, Dave Rush will be on um, and live and in person, the whole thing. Uh, and Dave will post the Discord links. It's the, unofficial Total Seminars Discord channel. And it's not run by us, but by our friend Jose Braden, but it's a good place to go after the AMAs just to say hi and bring your camera and bring your microphone and have some real-time chats. Lots of good techs on there, including me sometimes, Dave, Mike, although not today, I think, but. No, we're, we're gonna, unfortunately, we're gonna be a little buried today. Yeah, so. Uh... <laughs> Um, okay, 221, Alucard. Can you give us an example of how we could use NS Lookup for troubleshooting? So, what kind of troubleshooting? Don't say DNS. I know it's DNS. Uh, NS Lookup is not nearly as good as it used to be simply because of security issues. A lot of the most, any public DNS server is pretty much going to ignore the vast majority of NS Lookup queries. Uh, but probably the biggest single thing NSLOOKUP can still do for you is you can verify is a DNS server up or is this particular IP address or URL a DNS server. Right. And that's pretty easy to do, just NSLOOKUP space and then the IP address or the URL for the server and then see what comes back. And if it comes back and really doesn't say anything, mm -hmm. that's the NSLOOKUP of going, okay, <laughs> and then, nice. then you're fine. But that would be probably 90% of the time I use NS Lookup. It's because I'm worried that one of my DNS servers is down. And I can do a quick uh, NS Lookup query. And at least, it, even if it can't respond back, if it's not a DNS and I can't do it, I don't. We don't have a way to show you command line right now. This is why we got to fix this, man. I know, I know. I know. Um, we will get it fixed. Uh, but that, that's the big thing. You use NS, NS lookup, space, uh, do, here, try this at home. Go to a command line, type NS lookup, space, 8.8.8.8. .8 and that should work just fine because it'll pop up with a, hello, I'm Google's DNS server. Right. Excellent. So, Andre at 221, while you are still trying to queue up the total test. I'm code. working on it. Okay. Andre at 221 asked me specifically, how is the Android phone working for you? Any regrets not taking that fruit phone? By which he means, of course, my beloved Apple iPhone. Uh, let's just say 
I'm not a native Android person, and we'll leave it at that. <laughs> you got that right. Wow. Talk about a culture shock and unable to figure anything out intuitively at all. Uh, luckily, half the office is Android people, and they're happy to show me what an idiot I am. And it's like, you just pushed that thing right there, Scott. So, yeah. You're just used to Apple pushing it for you. That's right, and I like that. And Apple kind of like holding my hand as, I, as they push it for me. I, for one, welcome our new robot overlords. <laughs> uh, Ping at 223, do you accept Steam friend requests? Yes, absolutely. Mike's Steam name is Senor Pepe, uh, with no Enye, which is kind of weird, but there you go. Uh, it's very hard to do an Enye on an English keyboard, other than going through raw... Uh, ASCII. Oh, I see you said it too. It's not ASCII. It's uh, Unicode. Unicode. There you go. What? But yeah, but it, okay. All yeah, right. Yeah. So but I'm Senior Pepe. So yes, he does take Steam, Steam, Steam friend requests. And I'm not going to do multiplayer. Uh, Counter Strike. Oh, I'd do a multiplayer Counter Strike. Borderlands. No. No. Uh, uh, any any real time strategy is just terrible. Oh. I just don't have the reflexes. Yeah. You know, I get my slapped around by 12 year olds. <laughs> Which is always good. Oh, there was a good joke in there, but I, I just super scrolled. Have you figured out Total Tester yet, sir? Yes, I figured out Total Tester. Okay, excellent. Well, we got plenty more questions. We, we do. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, right, Savage Cabbage? Excellent, yeah, Dave Rush on Fridays, part two for the retro pie. I'm breaking out my retro pie that Mike accidentally gave me, or my beautiful pie four, and uh, he, he gave it to me on air, so he couldn't take, no take backsies. There we go, you got him in. <laughs> um, oh, Savage Jeremy, Cabbage put the Unicode in for it, and yeah, for a- that, that is correct, that is correct. You knew the, you knew the Unicode? I did. For, oh, come on. Martin Acuna. I had to type oh, that in all the Martin. time. Yeah, one of my best friends. So, um, hey, wait, it seems that Dr. Quinn has a question about. <coughs> Dr. Quinn, Mike, where can I get one of these fart horns? Uh, I, I, uh, it was given to me as a gift. I was told it came from Amazon. That's all I can tell you. Here, here's a good, here's what it looks like. And I'm sure if you go into Amazon and type in fart gun, it will come up. Ah, okay, so Jeremy Parker has a real Scatological humor! Has a real question at 225. Go. So how much does the test cost, and do you take both the same day, and are they paid separately, or both the same time? Well, By which mean, do you mean, Jeremy? The A+. A+. Plus. Uh, they are totally separate exams. Um, you, you have to pay for each one separately, and you get one certification if you pass both of them. Yeah. yeah, and uh, price-wise, Jeremy, I don't know where you are. There's about seven or eight prices, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, so it, it can be a bit of a challenge there to get a, a legit price. Uh, where, where do they go to get? Onview.com would probably... On, on view, sure. Yeah, www.onvue.com would get some pricing there. Um, also, do keep in mind, Jeremy, we, get, we give away a voucher every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday... Now, you would need two vouchers, but we'll give you one, which can save you a few hundred dollars. It, it's in the low hundreds of dollars per test, which sounds like a lot of money, but it's actually, these days, you can pay a lot of money for certification exams. Absolutely. So, yeah. uh, and do you take both at the same time, at the same day? That's completely up to you. Schedule it however you want. Schedule one and don't schedule the other. I've always been a big fan of scheduling one right after the other just to get it done. Right. Uh, but uh, that's really up to you. Uh, so when, when you sign up for the exam and when you're paying your money, not only do you say where you'll take it and what day you'll take it, you also say what time you're going to take it. And, uh, you know, and whatever testing center you're going to or if you're doing it at home, you know, they have a pretty flexible schedule in general. And you can tell them, I want to take one and then an hour and a half later, take the other one. It's really up to you. Right. Awesome. I was scrolling right, back. Right there. What? Both at the same time. Right. I was 
okay, there we go. I, I saw Patricia's uh, congratulations to Malibu 8080, 80, Malibu 88, Malibu 8800. I just passed my A plus 1002 a few days ago. Yay. Well done, Malibu. Thanks, Mike. You were a big help. Also, when is the Network Plus 008 coming out? The you mean test? The test or our training materials? The test, test is, is already out. out. Yeah. Test is out. Uh, the book is, it's, it's in January. trucks. January. Is it going to be January? Yeah. What? So one of the things that's, that's weird, we, m most of you, if you're buying any computer gear, you know this. Uh, there's worldwide uh, shortages and um, supply chain issues. It turns out that paper is part of that supply chain uh, debacle at this point. Um, so yeah. <laughs> wow, I didn't. Know, I didn't realize. Yeah. But will the ebook be out sooner than that? The ebook should be out sooner. Yeah. Well, that yeah, we finished that book a month ago. So, just because we're finished, <laughs> that doesn't mean McGraw-Hill's finished. So, what Mike means is, he finished First Right a month ago. That doesn't mean we finished the book a month ago. But aren't all the copy edits in now? The copy edits are in, all the page proofs are in. Page proofs, that's yep. the word I was looking for. Uh, except for the um, glossary. <laughs> <laughs> Which is 220 pages of love, man. God, it's just so crazy. I, I know, know, it's we painful. just need to get rid of glossaries altogether. <laughs> anyway, congrats, Malibu. That's awesome. Um, so 008, our book's coming out early, early next year. The videos that Mike and, and Joe Ram shot for 008 should be coming out um, shortly within the, by, by Thanksgiving. But the, the important thing to keep in mind is that the Network Plus 007 is going to be good for another year. This is almost never done. Uh, this amount of overlap is unprecedented. Right. And as much as I love the Net Plus 008, my rule always is, when possible, always take the earlier exams. So, you know, if you got till next July to take the 007, take it. Nobody really, yeah, I, I know, nobody really cares which exam you take, no matter what the rest of these people type into their chat window. <laughs> <laughs> I forget who was it. Um, so, Spat is at 2.30, which means eight minutes ago. Hi, Mike and Scott. What are the main things that you see people struggle with on the Network Plus? I recently failed N10007, and I'm wondering what people struggle with to see if I struggle the same. I would say most of the time, people are, are it's, it's not so much the subject matter that they struggle with. It's structuring the subject matter in such a way that they can easily test it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, like people will sit here and go nutsy trying to memorize a bunch of port numbers, which I mean, you, you need to know a number of port. You need to know a number of numbers. Uh, that was number of numbers? Number of port numbers. Uh, but the problem is, is I, and I think this is important, and uh, is, is that you need to work work with this stuff uh who cares what ports ftp uses if you're not doing port forwarding behind your home router and, right. or port triggering for ftp and all this kind of stuff i think the mistake most people make is they don't play enough and especially in the network plus honestly anybody who's got a windows system and a standard soho router at home is got the biggest part of the tools that they need to do it. There's probably a few more things that wouldn't hurt, but those are the big ones. Okay, sounds good. Uh, <coughs> sorry. Wow. Hope your speakers weren't blown. <coughs> uh, Patricia, give me strength. Give me strength to persevere. Patricia's on my seat. She's my not, actually. She was oh, she's on my an anti-farter? Yep. She hmm. said, hang in there, be strong. <laughs> uh, what do we got here? <laughs> Whatever Patricia said, she's retracted it. Oh, oh, she had my back. Not anymore. I don't what know. Time is it? it is two forty. Okay, we're doing great. Yeah, we are doing fine. Um, see, see, don't be scared. Okay. There we go. Andale. Okay, okay, okay. Ao <laughs> card is a gal, right? 
Is that the name? I, I, think, I think it's a really right. I forget. Name, right, buddy. This came up as a conversation. All right. All right. JM, uh, at 235, would a certificate of completion from a program from a school like my computer career help me to put on my resume and obtaining a job? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, any, any, good, any good school should be able to provide a... Well, he, here he's really just talking about a certificate of completion. Mm -hmm. Maybe on an entry level kind of thing, I could see that. Yeah, right. the answer is same, yes. Same, same thing. It's like you know, it's a, a, a degree or a you know, an associate's degree or whatever. I mean, anything that you have accomplished that is relevant to the position you're going for can be helpful. Absolutely. So, Jen at two thirty six asks. She's truly, truly, truly outrageous. You don't even catch that. No, no, I don't. Jen, explain it to all the rest of them because they don't know what we're talking. Here, I gotta pour some. <laughs> are there? Are I there? Have to pour coffee. I just want to make sure the coffee pot doesn't show up on camera. The coffee pot is not on screen. So there you go. Uh, are there any questions from one thousand one that show up on the one thousand two test? No. No. Uh, there's going to be very related questions, so you have to be careful about this. Uh, for example, in the one thousand one A plus. Mass storage is always the best place That's, to talk yeah. about this issue. Where I was going to go to. Okay. Uh, in the 1001, they're going to be talking about M.2 versus SATA and uh, rot spindle speeds, which are still in there. Yeah, they are. Ro so, so not just, uh, so not just uh, uh, SSDs, but old school HDDs still on there. And, and, and rotational media is all over the place. Oh, yeah. And, 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 yeah. yeah. It's still a pretty cheap way to go. But so you'll get questions like on physical hardware on 1001, but you'll also get mass storage questions on 1002, but it's more like formatting partitioning. and partitioning, that sort of thing. Yeah, so, so watch for related questions. Absolutely, and you'll get RAID on both. Hardware RAID on 1001, software RAID on 1002. So there you have it. Jeremy Parker is from Tupelo, Mississippi. So 237, Ping asks, is the new A plus exam out yet? No. Not there yet. is there is no new A plus exam. There's been no public announcement. We're still doing the one thousand one and the two two zero one thousand one and two two zero one thousand two, and maybe some people who do, you know, CompTIA training for a living might be aware of something that might be coming out. But if they but were we, aware, they, could, they, they couldn't, couldn't say. talk about That's it. That's right. They Not on a nothing. public forum or anything Lord. like that. No, no, even no. if they were to know that, that pretty much signifies it's going to be well over a year before the next A plus would be out even so much as announced. So there is no new A+. plus. We've got 220-1001, 220-1002. I would guess a, Speculate. A, a lot less than a year, but that's just me, Mr. Vegas. You are Mr. Vegas. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm. Um, what do we got here? Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, the <laughs> Savage Dave. Cabbage just saw the 007 net plus 007 retires in June of 2022. Yeah. Yeah, it's very strange yeah. that they're running it that far. Uh, oh, look at that. Amen. Farah. Farah, maybe, with a rolled R. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mike and Professor Messer, for helping me pass my A plus exams. Congratulations. That's awesome. So I'm not related to Professor Messer. I mean, he sends my mom a check every month, but. <laughs> Wow. I'm sorry. It was wow. right there. It was, it was. Come wow. On. <laughs> now you should definitely pull the trigger. Wow. Okay. That is. Uh, <laughs> 238, Malibu 8080. Oh, you're 80, trying. 80, I wanted to gel more. Malibu 8800. Can I still take the 007 even though the 008 is out? You absolutely can. And, and the, should. And they'll overlap. <laughs> so literally when you're registering to take the Network Plus, it's going to say, do you want to take the o -O N10007 or N10008? I would strongly recommend, especially this early in the process. Now, come next April, I might be saying do the 008. Right. Because uh, that will be given up enough time to you know, get a better feel for it. Right. Uh, but when you're registering for the exam, be sh very careful to make sure you're scheduling the N10007. Abu Bakr likes your watch. You like my watch? It's a, uh, it's. What is it? Is it's it a, a smart watch? Oh, it's a, it's a very smart watch. <laughs> this, this watch, I was like, 
It's like, don't eat that bagel. I mean, it's like amazing, <laughs> you know? Mike, Mike. It's like, hey, Stop. fat boy. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So you were a little bit under, a uh, little bit under dollars on the query on the cost of the A plus exams. The retail price for the A plus exams is two hundred and thirty two dollars a piece. That's retail. You can yeah. get discount vouchers from us, from our competitors, and you'll save a few dollars as well. Couple, yeah. So, so yeah. we ought to talk about this. How are we doing on time? We. I'll, I'll make we're us quick. Short. <laughs> so what, when you're talking about paying for certifications, in particular CompTIA certifications. Number one, never pay retail. That's ridiculous. Right. So at the very least, buy a discount voucher. Lots of people sell discounted vouchers. It's not a huge discount. It's about a 10% discount, but still, that's 20 some odd bucks in your sure. pocket. Sure, sure. Or what's that in euros? Like seven euros? I, I'm kidding. It's, it's, it's about a, a, a... It's 80 degrees here. What is that in Celsius? 32 degrees Celsius. I'm pretty sure that's right. Okay. Uh, 30 degrees Celsius. All right. Five ninths plus 32. Um, minus 32. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> we we got to give away a voucher still we, here, Scott. We do. We you're, do. You're, do you have a question queued up? I mean, where are you I do you have at? a question. Yeah, I'm not You want to wait until till the end? I want, I, what were we just literally, I want to get the answer to the question that was just asked that I started being silly about. No, don't do that. You terrify me when you start scrolling like a wild That man. was the serious question. Can okay. you still take the 007? Yes. Oh. And you answered that. Okay, but I didn't. All right, so number one, you can get a discount voucher about 10% off. Number two, and this is tricky to do, but a lot of places in a lot of countries, uh, CompTIA works directly with schools to provide deeply discounted vouchers and very deeply discounted, like 60% uh, discount. Wow. We can't do that because we're not a school, but a lot of times you can work with a school, uh, and this just varies depending on where you're at, even if you're not a student. But obviously you want to be a student is the easiest way to get these very uh, cheap vouchers. Even if your teacher doesn't know about this, you should have your teacher contact their local CompTIA rep. If, you, if your teacher doesn't know who their CompTIA rep is, Feel free to contact me directly. Just send me an email, michaelm at totalstem.com, uh, and I will find out who your rep is for your country, and uh, we'll, we'll help you uh, get that. So that's another way to get uh, discount vouchers. And, of course, the other way is that we're averaging 50 people or so a day. Right. So you got a 1 in 50 shot of getting a free voucher right here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So there we so go. So there's a lot of good ways Avoid paying retail if you can. All right, 240, value card. This might be a loaded question, but is it possible for me to get an entry-level job in cybersecurity before I get a bachelor's degree? Absolutely, the vast majority of people who do entry-level IT security jobs don't have degrees. It's a light blue collar position. But ALU card, you should still go for that sheepskin. That's a, definitely opens up more opportunities. There is also, uh, Dave will post it uh, if he gets a moment. Um, there was a great session you did with Jessica Dickerson last year on entry-level cyber cybersecurity jobs. Uh, very, very much still relevant. Uh, do a search right here in this Total, Total Seminars channel for Jessica Dickerson um, or entry-level security jobs, and, and that session will pop up. It's about two hours long. Great information. Yeah, it was a great session. And we also, uh, yeah, great session. Yep, absolutely. Uh, Bernardo Molina. Hey, Mike, I took your A-plus exam and finally got into a help desk position. Excellent. Excellent. It's not my exam, it's CompTIA's, but thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I knew what you meant. And now you can't, can't wait to start on that Network Plus. Good, good. So that's awesome. Well done, Bernardo. Uh, oh, thank you, Dave. Uh, Dave Rush, senior instructor and all-around nice guy, posted the link to the the entry-level security session at 2.49. So check it out. Ah, Yub. We love Mike Myers. I he's, love Mike Myers, too. He's a lovable kind of guy. I'm, I'm humble and lovable. <laughs> <laughs> the humble part. Yeah. This is a permanent thing now. Oh, Scott no. is literally going to steal this on his way out. 
It's going to leave nothing but a cryptic note. Yep. Yep, that's for sure. Uh, okay, what do we got? We got 10 minutes. We got 10 minutes. I have a question queued up for the free voucher giveaway. Ready to go. Okay. Yeah, it's about a buck, thir a buck 30 to, a, a, to the euro right now. There we go. Lots of people. Uh, and Dave Brush even posted how many U.S. dollars to a Bitcoin. <laughs> uh, oh, that's true. Patricia uh, reminded us to go to live chat rather than top chat on the... Uh, in your chat window here in YouTube, especially when we start the competition, it's going to make a big difference. If you, It will help you succeed if you are on live chat. That's, that Before the competition starts. So do that now if you haven't done it already. Valerie Boss. Now there's a that's a last name. That that is Boss. Valerie, are you related to Hugo by any chance? I you know. <laughs> <laughs> Probably heard that a thousand times. JM, that's an interesting question. Uh, 251. Will you have a special free voucher party or giveaway for vets on Veterans Day? JM. We're, we're, we've really just started giving away vouchers. We just worked out this very generous deal with uh, CompTIA. Uh, they've been wonderful about this. Uh, JM, here's how it works. We're still pretty new at this. Uh, we've been doing these uh, AMAs for over a year, but there's always a new idea. So JM, keep showing up and keep yelling and giving us ideas. And I mean, literally, like the last two people we hired came from the live stream, right? I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> people are <laughs> told... Andrew Hutz. God, sorry, Andrew. I, I went blank for a minute. Wow. It was like, wow. Bernice. It's showing the love. <laughs> I kept wanting to say Patricia Grace. I was like, no. Patricia doesn't want to work for us. Especially with that. I think she's, no. I think she's PFG. Pro fart gun. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh. oh my gosh. Wow. I just, the, the, that, that, oh. that. That pregnant pause this is, while you're trying to figure out, this watching the smoke come painful, out of your ears, Jernigan. Painful. Uh, <laughs> this is the most painful AMA <laughs> ever, Mike, except for that one. Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the police, you know, what are you gonna do? Oh, well, yeah, you know, better than when the fire department came. I've probably. never been swatted before, but it was fun. <laughs> uh, all right, we're getting close here. All right, guys. here we go. We are, we are all the way at the end of the question. I ah, Valerie Boss. LOL. No, but it was a good choice when my husband married me and made me... The boss. The boss. Ah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's even better absolutely. now. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yeah. There's a joke in there about undercover boss, but I'm not going to... Yeah. Yeah. Can we do the practice? Can we give away a voucher so, or not? So the voucher. Let, let's talk about this voucher giveaway. It's a competition. Right. I'm going to put up a test question and you have to answer it, okay? The first person who answers it wins. It's gonna be a multiple choice question, but it, you can't type in the just the ant, like A, B, C, or D. You have to type enough of the word out that I know, or words, or sentence, or whatever it is, that I know what you're talking about. So don't type A, B, C, D, type out the actual thing itself. Whoever shows up first on Scott Jernigan's feed wins. Just because you think you're first, that doesn't necessarily mean you are first. So you just uh, what? This is not a fair competition. We try to make it as fair as we can, uh, but we can only go so far. So you got to be cool. Scott calls the ball on this, and uh, whoever he says wins. So this voucher will be coming from coming from uh, CompTIA, and it's good for any place in the entire world where you can take a CompTIA exam. So this is a, this is a pretty sweet deal, a very sweet deal. Um, what other, there was one other thing I wanted to point out. Dun, dun, dun. I don't know, I don't know what it was, but it's awesome. So here we go. All right, so Your guys. To win. Oh, if you've already won a voucher, you can play, but you're not gonna win a second one. Yeah, guys, keep in mind, uh, we're not here to supply every person with all the freebies they want, okay? Uh, so we're, we're, we try to spread it out. So especially if you're a newer person, we're probably going to give you a little weight uh, uh, in terms of, of who wins or not, you know? You, so anyway, bear with me on this. Let's go ahead and start. Uh, just for the record, JM, I've made the text as large as I can. So good luck, man. We'll do the best you can do. Scott, you ready for the competition? 
I am ready for that competition, sir. Here we go. Remember, do not type just A, B, C, or D. All right. Uh, this is an A-plus question from the 220-1001. What component is in charge of powering an LCD screen? Is it the backlight, the PCMCIA card, the PCIe card, or the inverter? I want the... Do, 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 do. People, people are answering. People are answering like... This is an interesting one because I would argue that there are two answers here. Really? I would. So this, the, before we get back to the question, this is a good example of the type of question you're going to run into. On CompTIA exams, the number one reason people fail CompTIA exams is test anxiety. The second most common reason that people fail exams, or CompTIA exams, is you know too much. That's the number two reason, okay? And this is a great example because I know too much mm -hmm. that I'm probably putting the wrong answer in here. Anyway, so I look at that. What component is in charge of powering an LCD screen? Well, it is the backlight, but I guess it powering, not lighting. It said powering. Okay. This is another good example why people fail the CompTIA exams is they don't read the question. Okay, it's got to be the inverter then. Let me double check. And guys, this is actual our actual practice questions. D is correct. Okay, yeah. So it is... Uh, here, I'm trying to make this small for JM, and now I'm worried no mouse it. So it is the inverter. So, uh, so the inverter converts uh, AC into no, it converts DC into AC power, and uh, because it's a, fluor a fluorescent, requires that. Now, here's the question: Is is that with LED backlights? So this is another example where right. knowing too much is going to get you in trouble, right? Because I would argue with an LED. Does LED, Dave Rush, does, do LEDs run on AC or DC power? Somebody answer that. Is it AC or DC? LEDs are, eight, LEDs are powered on DC. LEDs have a plus and a minus. Yeah. Well, this is even a better question because, see, now because we know so much, we know that most uh, LCDs are actually backlit by LEDs, we would argue that there isn't even an inverter. Well, that's going to get you in trouble. It is going to get you in trouble. But you Different have, technologies. But I guarantee you this is a very good question that tracks very closely to what you'll see on the CompTIA A+. Scott, who said inverter first? Well, we have a new winner today. Oh. Abu Bakr Alhaj. Abu Bakr, I apologize if we're mauling your name. We're trying here. <laughs> but you just won a CompTIA voucher. Dave Rush? Senior Instructor for Total Seminars is going to post in the feed uh, contact information for you. Um, basically, you'll send an email to Dave Rush, Dave R at totalsim.com, and you'll put in information that's, that CompTIA needs, which is your real name, your, if, assuming it's different, I don't know, uh, because we know that Steadiest Shark is his real name. Tolowit. Tolowit, clearly. Anyway, put your name in, put the... Patricia Grace. Put the... That's a nom de plume but, if I've ever heard one. Put the country where you're going to take the exam. Whichever exam you want to take and which exam you're planning to take. So Dave will post all that stuff. Uh, he posted it at 2.58, which tells us our strength... Mrs. Boss. I love that. <laughs> Valerie, I love your last name. You're, you're, you marry the good guy. What can I say? That's right. That's right. He, he may be a completely jerk, but I love the last name. Anyway, Abu, you have to be very careful. It is incredibly important because of the high value of these vouchers is that you must send this email, okay? All the information you need is right there in the uh, chat window. Please read it carefully, okay? Because CompTIA is being a little bit of a jerk on, uh, well, I, I, look, they're giving stuff away. They can be all the jerk they want to be. Uh, you're welcome. Yeah, you're very welcome, all right? That's awesome. Anyway, guys, we absolutely have to go. Scott, I got to go. I know, I, gotta go. I know, I know. Folks, I know. come so, be back here on Friday. Friday. Uh, it's going to be Dave Rush's AMA, D-R-A-M-A, -A, or drama. And uh, Dave will be doing an amazing thing with raspberry pies. If you sit there and say, I'm not interested in raspberry pie, you're crazy. Because raspberry pies are in a wonderful, cheap way to do all kinds of A-plus, net-plus, security-plus stuff. And that's what Dave's all about. It's not so important to teach about raspberry pies. It's to show you how you can use very inexpensive tools to study for your CompTIA certifications. I cannot recommend Dave's 
uh, enough. And he's going to give away another voucher on Friday as well. So hard to beat that. Absolutely. Guys, I will see you back on Monday. We're going to not be we're uh, uh, here in the U.S. We're going to be off uh, daylight savings. That's right. So check your time zones, especially those of you in Europe. Uh, the U.S. is changing its time zone thing uh, starting on Sunday. So we'll be an hour. We're going to fall back. So we'll be an hour later. Right. We'll be an hour later than whatever is in your time zone. So we're going to go from day, uh, central daylight time to central standard time. Please double check your uh, watches and your time zone to make sure our offsets are good. And with that, we absolutely have got to go. Folks, this is Mike Myers. And Scott Jernigan. Signing off. We will see you guys soon. Bye-bye.